call the Thursday, October 12, 2017 Highway Building Committee meeting to order. Have a roll call, please. Mr. McConnell. Here, present. Mr. Tripp. Mr. Lejess. Present. Mr. Vickery. Present. Mr. Oltoff. Ms. Polk. Mr. Mulcahy. Present. Mr. Hildebrand. Present. Mr. Einfeld. Ms. Weber. Present. Ms. Evans. Ms. Peters. Present. Ms. Parker. Present. Mr. Ritter. Mr. Kinzinger. Mr. Wheeler. Present. Mr. Lear. Present. We have a quorum. quorum. Okay. Any public comments? I did not receive any. <clears throat> did not have any. <clears throat> You've been distributed the minutes of the 2000 or September 14, 2017 minutes, probably by email. Need a motion to approve, Mr. Oltoff, Ms. Parker. Any comments, corrections, deletions, additions, subtractions? Nothing, huh? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carried. Mr. Rogers. All right, uh, I don't have any bids this morning, uh, but I do have pay estimates. Uh, first one I have this morning is for our 2017 General Maintenance Supplement 4, payable to Grasso Construction Company. This is for oil and chip work done on the county highways, and that amount is $56,396.13. Next is for our county general maintenance for 2017. Pay estimate payable to Prairie Material Sales. This is for road mix and uh, chips picked up at the uh, quarry, and that amount is $8,990.31. Next is for our county general maintenance for 2017, payable to Vulcan Materials. This is for road mix picked up at the quarry, and that amount is $360. Next is a Sumner Road District for their 2017 general maintenance payable to Grasso Construction Company, and that amount is $106,301.72. Next is Essex Road District for their 2017 general maintenance supplement one, payable to Vulcan Materials. This is for uh, chips picked up at the quarry, and that amount is $9,295.01. Next is Janeer Road District for their 2017 General Maintenance Supplement 1, payable to Vulcan Materials. This is for chips, uh, CA-16 chips picked up at the quarry, and that amount is $6,357.51. Next is for our County General Maintenance uh, non-MFT. This is to Gallagher Asphalt. This is for the overlay uh, project that was up on County Highway 9 in Mantino at the overpass. And that amount is $213,563.00. Uh, next is uh, for Section 13-00206-02-RS. This is payable to the Treasurer of the State of Illinois. This is for the federal job on County Highway 58 from 115 into Chabance. And that amount is $156,386.40. Next is Pilot Road District, Section 15-12153-00-BR non-MFT. This is payable to Hammond Wagner Excavation. Uh, this is for a box culvert and a pipe that was replaced in the township, and that amount is $83,043.16. And last is Norton Road District, Section 08-09106-01-BR. This is payable to Reber Construction. This is for a bridge that was replaced in Norton Township, and that amount is $1,662.50. Okay, a motion to approve, and motion to second. Peters, and who else? Mr. Oltoff. Any questions, corrections, deletions, subtractions? Mr. Oltoff. Has it ever uh, approved that you were slag on any rate? I just did. Turn up your hearing aid. <laughs> uh, you can use slag in certain materials according to the spec book. We don't use them in all applications, uh, but yes, you can use them in some applications according to the spec book. Do we? We have not in some time, but um, 
it, the problem that we found a few years ago with slag is the state told us we couldn't put anything on top of it. Oh. Okay. Because it expands and contracts. Yeah. Yeah. But you can use it. Uh, I think there's some applications in the asphalt. You can use it, um, you know, for um, some, um, like some fill areas, things like that. But it can't be under the paint. It's an inexpensive product. Correct. Just Any others? We have a motion to second. We need a roll call, please. Mr. McConnell? Aye. Mr. Lajess? Aye. Mr. Vickery? Aye. Mr. Oltaw? Aye. Mr. Mulcahy? Aye. Mr. Hildebrand? Aye. Ms. Weber? Aye. Ms. Peters? Aye. Ms. Parker? Aye. Mr. Wheeler? Motion carries. Uh, I have a resolution this morning. This is for our 2018 general maintenance for MFT. Uh, it's required each year that the uh, board approve a resolution for spending our MFT. This is the I, this is the total MFT that I predict we would have to spend if we spent it all, and that amount is three million seventy-eight thousand three hundred eighty-two dollars. Um, from this resolution, I submit estimates to IDOT and they authorize the money, but they cannot authorize any more than we have in this resolution. Any questions? Mr. Lajess. Uh, Mark, uh, at the Bradley Village Board meeting on Monday night, the mayor read a letter and I'm not quite sure if I recall who it was from, but it basically said there was, uh, in the, the coming budget, there was $300 million gonna be cut out of IDOT Yes, and it put the North Street project uh, over the uh, 57 in jeopardy, and I was just wondering how that affects the county. As well, far as I, I do want to address that with everyone. Do you want me to address it now while we're well, talking about this? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, this well, well let's take, it's not. It's not really part of this okay. resolution. Well, let's take care of this one first. Yeah, then. Okay. Go ahead. Right. Anything else? Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Then Mr. Lodis. Need a roll call, please. Mr. McConnell? Aye. Mr. Lejess? Aye. Mr. Vickery? Aye. Mr. Oltaw? Aye. Mr. Mulcahy? Aye. Mr. Hildebrand? Aye. Ms. Weber? Aye. Ms. Peters? Aye. Ms. Parker? Aye. Mr. Wheeler? Aye. Motion carries. Motion carries. Before we get to that subject, I do want to address another uh, issue. I had a resignation last week for a maintenance worker. Um, I just want to get the nod from this committee to uh, fill that vacancy before winter here. Uh, I am also going to advertise for an assistant county engineer, which we've talked about in the past, and I just have sat and kind of waited for a little while to do that, but I think now is probably a good time to get that accomplished too. So if I could just have the approval of this committee to okay. fill the, fill the uh, vacancy of a, of, a, of a maintenance worker next door. It's in your budget, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it's all in my budget. Does it need approval if it's in his budget? I mean, you need a motion? I don't think so, do you? No, no it's in his budget. Okay. I just, I just have always been told just I need to get the nod of the committee to hire. Mr. Wheeler. Thank you. And, and, and uh, I appreciate the bringing it to the committee. Obviously, uh, for the most part with elected positions, they have the purview to do that within any of their departments. Um, it's our job to enforce budgets, if you will. Um, so in, in this case, it is appreciated to bring it here. I think that we don't necessarily want to increase uh, spend, but again, this is typically not general fund money related. Right. Um, so we, I would say that I have, I'm okay with it. Okay. You know, this is not general fund, even though it comes from a separate level. All right. Okay. All right, thank you. All right. Thank you for the uh, introduction into the topic today. Not, but, not um, a good news. Yeah. Oh. Um, the Illinois yeah. Department of Tra Transportation revised its fiscal year 2018 program for roads and bridges uh, as a result of the state budget, which is, was enacted by lawmakers in July. Um, those changes transferred about $303 million in funds that were previously paid 
from the general fund into the transportation fund. Um, there's speculation that this was because of the lot box uh, amendment, uh, the safe roads amendment, but I don't think that that was really the purpose that the that everyone thought that this was going to uh, the result of the, the, that we were going to have because of the amendment. But um, they'll have a significant impact on IDOT's budget and it does affect the locals, but uh, the obligations that came from the local, the general fund into the uh, IDOT's fund was the debt service for the highway bonds, which was about $52 million. The debt service for bonds uh, for RTA capital projects, which was about $130 million. Uh, states operating match to the RTA uh, for $100 million and free senior rides and paratransit in Chicago area for 21 million. Uh, approximately 250 million would be cut from the state program and the local program will probably face about 53 million in reduction this year. Uh, for the state, this means that construction work will not happen for about 124 miles in highway improvements and 22 bridges projects statewide. The six-year multi-year IDOT program faces a billion dollar loss if this thing keeps going forward. So um, for the from the local perspective, uh, that 53 million remains a re means a reduction in our local road programs by 50% cut in several of the IDOT local programs, which uh, these local programs were discretionary that were created back in the 90s, maybe like 89, 90s. Um, uh, one was the uh, state-only Chicago commitment, which uh, is $20 million now, reduced from 40. Uh, county consolidated, which affects the county directly, uh, that went from 21,800,000 to 10,900,000. Needy townships, which affects some of the townships in Kankakee County, uh, that amount went from 10,014,000 to 5,700,000. High growth cities, uh, there's a three villages in the county that do receive uh, that uh, high growth cities. That amount went from 4 million to 2 million. Economic development program uh, went from 15 million to 8 million. Truck access route program went from 7 million to 5 million and park access roads went from 6 million to 3 million. Uh, for the county highway department, uh, the county consolidated program directly affects us. We get that check one time a year in September. Uh, last uh, September, we received a check for $273,333. Uh, I received a check last week for $132,906. So we lost, you know, about $133,000 basically in one swoop. So uh, for the townships in the county, we have seven townships that receive money from the needy townships, uh, Essex Township, uh, in 2016, received $1,407. That was cut in half to $735. Norton Township got $16,048. That's going to be reduced to $8,024. Pembroke got $14,164. It's going to $7,082. Pilot Township got $4,828. That's being reduced by half. Rockville got $49.71. That'll be reduced by half. Salina got $37.68 and Sumner got $75.17. Uh, there are three villages in the counties that receive uh, high growth city funds. Uh, the village of Bourbon A in 2016 received $21,075. Uh, they received 10,368. The Village of Bradley last year got 18,668. Uh, they are getting 9,181. And the Village of Mantino got 13,748. And they're only going to get $6,749. So the news is not good. Uh, we're going the wrong way. Uh, our prices are going up. We're getting cut. Um, the, the state. Uh, does not share in the motor vehicle registration fees. The locals get none of that. Uh, the, we do not get any of the diesel differential, which was created when uh, the state was getting all the heavy loads on their roads, the 80,000 pounds. We have to take the 80,000 pound trucks now with the longer lo longer trailers now. So that's that's really beating our roads up. I mean, our, we're, we're seeing our, our road edges fall apart because of the wider loads, the heavier loads. I mean, we're just going the wrong way here, but I don't know what can be done about it at this point. Um, 
if this is uh, if this language in this year's bill is allowed to stay, uh, the cost of covering the bond amount we were told is going to be an increase every year. Uh, it was also stated that money is being transferred with no requirement being made of similar cuts on the transit system side that are receiving all the funds. And it was reiterated by one member of the committee, our IEC committee, that we as counties are being tapped to cover the cost of borrowing that we did not receive benefits from. But here we are. So um, I just wanted to bring this to everybody's attention. You probably heard a little bit about it on the radio, but I just wanted to tell you the direct impacts of what we have in the county here. Chairman Wheeler, then Mr. Peter. Thank, thank you. Um, and, and I appreciate that complete and thorough ex explanation. There's a, a few things in there I learned that I did know that I I try to stay off of soapboxes because it's, it seems like you're Don Quixote fighting against windmills with the state a lot from the county <laughs> level because nobody's listening. Nobody cares unless you're within Cook County mm -hmm. um, or St. Clair. Uh, really, that's it. That's all they care about. Um, but in this case, I, I want to at least... I can't let it go without saying that when you said 21 million for the free rides for seniors, I remember when that came in. That was an election year giveaway by Rod Bogoyevich. It was an unfunded mandate to hand that money to Chicago during an election year. And so a great portion uh, of places like Pembroke Township uh, got halved to support free rides in Chicago. Now I understand that people have, that have disabilities should, should receive some benefit, some help uh, from RTA, and I'd, I'd be more, more than willing to chip in. But these folks were already paying for the rides. So it's not like I'm anti-senior at all. You know, I, I wouldn't make it out of this room if I was. <clears throat> um, but <laughs> you're, you're probably correct in that. <laughs> what, <laughs> but what I'm, getting, what I'm getting at is, is that the rest of the state is again paying for <laughs> Chicago. And we have a direct impact in one of the one of the most challenged economic areas in, yeah. in the state, if not the nation, with roads in Pembroke Township to pay for rides in Chicago and debt service, like you said, that we are not re reaping any benefit from. So I would say that that you know the least we could do or should do would be to maybe we this committee drafts a letter to our state representative and our senator. And, mm -hmm. and under no certain terms, tell them exactly what this is doing to us. Uh, we could. Well, there's a hundred examples like this. This is just the latest insult, in my opinion. So. Mr. Peters. So, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I also wanted to say that was a nice explanation on everything going on. Um, is this the reason that we're hearing that they're talking about raising the taxes again, like five cents a gallon on gasoline? And no, that, that talk's been going different. on for quite some time. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, it... it it was discussed, it's been discussed every year, but it just doesn't go anywhere. I, I thought that it would, would have happened when Iowa did it and Indiana did it. I mean, the, both on each side of the state, but it just didn't happen. Nothing's, nothing's happening at, that, at this point. Any other comments for Mr. Rogers' questions? I just wanted to express my appreciation for his cooperative spirit and problem-solving abilities <laughs> and to present him with an apple pie today. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> but, but she only got one for it. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> You're excused, Mr. Ryan. Thank you. <laughs> Great job. Thank you. Mr. Gad Boys. I do have a question. A couple questions. I got distracted by pie. Um, <laughs> six thousand, uh, six thousand road. When, when is the date of completion on that? I always forget. Never I, I, I have not heard an update recently. There is an MPO meeting uh, the last Wednesday of the month, and we should get an update at that meeting. Okay. And then the County Nine Road is that done? That bridge. The uh, the oh. hot mix asphalt work. Yeah, the overlay is done. Okay. Uh, the uh, we just need to stripe it, and uh, there's probably some seating that needs to be done. Okay, so that because I know that was a major crossover for people in that area. I think Mr. Stauffenberg had said something about that that when that bridge closed, I may be a different. I'm mixing two things up, but weren't we doing some work on a bridge that people? Had we to? we were we overlaid uh, at I-57 and 9000 North. At the overpass, uh, yeah, traffic is a nightmare whenever we do any work mm -hmm. on that road. Uh, the the probably traffic was backed up probably a half a mile, 
uh, okay. between uh, I-57 and Route 45. But I mean, there's a lot of traffic on that on that overpass. But that that row was in deplorable condition. I mean, the the village had complained about it to us, and and when the board uh, returned some money, I I had to get that done. As it, as and it done. is that's completed, right? Yes. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Mr. Altoff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, on that road 9000, is there any chance of getting a stoplight on the east side? That would be up to the state. Oh, it is really bad. Yeah. Well, and I, I think that that will all be uh, looked at in a study when they actually uh, re... Uh, the, the structure over I-57 belongs to the state. <clears throat> um, that structure is being analyzed now because when we, we had to grind the deck, and uh, there's some shoring underneath there now mm. for that structure, and they're they are examining that structure for replacement. Because the, there's a stoplight on the west side. Yes, that was put up uh, years ago because uh, traffic was backed up almost onto 57 from that direction. But there's an accident waiting to happen on that that road during. I can I can write the state a letter if you'd like me to I'd, to bring I'd that like to their to attention that because somebody's going to get hurt. Yeah. 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 Thank you. All right. Thanks. Mr. Gadboys. Oh, Mr. Wojcic. Wojcic has something. I just. Mr. Snipes. I'm lu I'm elucidating back here. Uh, <laughs> hallucinating. Uh, Rather than a letter uh, to our state reps, I would propose a motion that we draft a resolution which has, I think has a little bit more uh, bite to it uh, since it would be by the whole board, the whole 28 member board on the uh, on the funds that are being taken away. Take it to the executive committee and do that? That might be a good idea, actually take a motion to send it to the executive committee. Need a motion to send it? Yeah, that's fine. Parker, second? Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Okay. Mr. Chairman. You sound like Colombo here. <laughs> well will the six thousand will the six thousand interchange one out here for ten minutes. take that load off of nine thousand? That's what I'm hoping that it will do, mm -hmm. yes. But I am I'm hoping that that will take some of the traffic off of nine thousand. Yeah. yeah. Oh. All those semis. I'm hoping so. Probably yeah. not. Thank you. <laughs> Don't use it anyway. Tear it up. Those trailers making the turn to wipe out the quarters. <laughs> morning. 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 Good morning. Uh, we'll start off with facility dude uh, for the month of September. 160 work orders. We're in a couple of months of really busy. Um, Move on to the financial report. You have before you the financial report, $13,969. We had a good month, a couple thousand less than our than our monthly average. Uh, and if anybody has any questions, I can answer any of those now. Ms. Peters. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just wondering where you're at on your budget, if you're kind of on track for the year. Well, I, I, don't, I honestly don't have an update because finance hasn't sent the payroll portion of it out to Amy, so I, I, I don't even want to comment on it because I don't know what the number is. All right. Other than that, if, the, if there's no questions on the expenditures, if you do have, I can cover all that with you if you'd like to know. Move into building report. Um, 189 here, as you well know, we lost air compressor one, or I'm sorry, air compressor, the condensing unit outside number one, that was completed about two weeks ago. So that's done. I had a couple of repairs that I needed to make some of my work trucks here at the building. Uh, I had a radiator go out, the brakes on the other one. I got those ready to go for the winter. The mail machine, first I wanna thank Andy and the auditor's office and this, the uh, state's attorney's office for punching through this mail machine and folder inserter, thank you. That's all that's done and done. All that stuff's down on a pallet down below waiting to get shipped out. They're gonna come get that any day. The new mail machine's installed and, and it's operational and everything's working fine. So that's that's complete. Um, our mail courier did a great job punching through this as they made that change. So thanks to Bob Beasley as well. 
Uh, I have several boiler inspections that are being completed. In fact, today we'll, we'll wrap up the annex building in the old jail downtown. The courthouse is done. All the boilers in the county have all been cleaned and, and are ready to go for winter. Uh, I had rotor rooter come out. We have some issues at the courthouse with the drainage coming off the copper top of the courthouse. There's four drains that come off the top of that dome. All three of the four are plugged up pretty good with bird uh, bird nests, bird stuff, if you will. Uh, I don't know how we're going to fix it because we have to have a crane and a bucket truck or a bucket, a crane cage to get up there to clean these these things out. So I'm, right now, I'm not I'm not concerned about it. We don't have leakage inside the courthouse from that roof. But this is something that's going to have to get addressed in the spring. I think we can let this go till spring, and 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 then we're going to have to take a look at this. So, Mr. Peter, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, I'm concerned if it's kind of blocked up and then it's holding a little bit of water and then it freezes, it's going to make it worse. So it's a it's a pretty good sized trough okay. that's up there. It's a, it, it's a copper trough. I, I'm not concerned about that because we haven't had issues with it. Okay, it it, it seems to be okay. But, but we still have a problem up there and it needs to be addressed. We have a pigeon problem downtown can't keep bad. And it stems from the executive building over here where they where they nest inside the cooling tower. And we now have, we have a huge hip pigeon problem on our own building as well. They, they were roofing that while well, they all moved over to here. Now they're away from the courthouse because we had a couple of hawks over there on the courthouse that nested. And that kind of cleaned up the problem over there, but it chased them all. Now I have it here. So unless the executive center, and I've called how to get rid of pigeons, you can't just kill pigeons. It's not, it's not allowed anymore. You have to actually poison them so their eggs don't hatch. So it's a long-term process. Or buy a hawk. Mr. Wheeler. Well, that was, that was going to be my question. Are you asking for staff to add a couple hawks? To, uh, I can. I can. Uh, I, I have a couple of staff that are hawks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so these are issues that are, that are going to be ongoing forever. I, we're never going to be able to make all that go away. It, it is what it is. So, we have to be careful with pigeon pigeon extermination. Very careful, Mr. Vickery. Mr. Vickery. Th thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this crane thing to get a cage up there. How much damage to the yard? Do you need to do it when it's frozen? Uh, I can't answer that. The ground's so hard right now. This little bit of rain we got didn't do anything to it. I mean, it's like concrete now. So, and we've driven trucks around there. We don't need a huge crane. We just need something that can reach to the bottom of the dome. It's not. It's not a giant crane. It'll be medium size, I guess, if you th will. Th thank you. That answered. It. What are we talking about? I don't know. I, days, I haven't even checked. Three days? I mean, I, I just, well, we can do it all in one day, right. uh, I, but I don't know what the costs are. I haven't even called on any of it, right. so I can't answer that. A normal crane's $1,500 a day. That's a normal one. So, mm -hmm. I, yeah. So, that's an issue that I'll be looking at, and we'll keep an eye on it. Um, we've delayed the painting on the interior of the dome, the repair in the painting, until Christmas. Uh, the painter that was awarded the contract. It is unavailable until that time, and it's probably going to work out better with the courthouse shut down at Christmas. That uh, traffic goes way down in there, so the whole thing will kind of coincide together. So we'll be doing that, but no, it's on my list, and we are going to move forward with it. Um, the self-represented litigants counter in courtroom 209. We met with the chief judge, Judge Albrecht, Sandy Cianci, myself, Kevin Duvall, they were looking for a location for two kiosks for the self-represented litigant counter that has to have two computers at it. There was several ideas thrown around on how we could make, get to where we needed to be to get these things operational by the 1st of January. We came up with an idea to move those two computers into room 209 of the second floor. We hired an architect, the architect came in. I have a preliminary drawing I just received last night. We've done all this within the last 10 days. We have a preliminary drawing of where those computers have to go, how we're gonna do it. Kevin and I are both in communication about how we're gonna make this happen. It, it's actually easy to do. The counters will be the biggest thing. And we have a door issue there as well that I'll work out with, with the AG and, and Mr. Wheeler. So we'll, 
we're moving forward with this. Um, everybody's in the loop that needs to be in it, and, and we're going to move forward. And I'll keep you in the loop of how, we, how we're going to progress forward. This has to get done by January 1. So we're, we're moving forward. Um, signage over at the courthouse with our with the AG's office. Uh, the parking lot signage is complete. We have a compliant signs on the courthouse and the annex building. Uh, Nordmeyer sign is in the process of making us signs for the inside. I have it all ready to go. Uh, we're moving forward with that. So th those issues are being resolved as we move forward with that. Um, the signs are at the, the parking lot signs. Thank you to the highway department who made the signs for us for the parking lots. And they did it uh, in, in short order. So they, they were very helpful with us. Thank you, Mark, for that. Uh, parking lot down at the old jail. That'll start on Monday. Highway Department's going to come over, take that out. We've notified everybody in the county that needs to be notified about this project. Uh, that The top of the lot will be scraped off, and I'm not going to go into detail about any of that because I don't know how they do all that. Uh, but that does start on Monday morning, and they'll move forward, weather permitting, and get that project completed. I've had some circulating pumps go out at the court at the old jail where we replaced those two pumps and I had a, a pump that was leaking pretty bad for the hot water. It's all hot water stuff. Um, those were taken care of. Uh, they started the elevator project that you guys approved two months ago at the old jail for the inmate elevator. They'll be done today. The inspector is coming. There was there at nine o'clock. They, they said they'd be done by noon. That elevator will be back in service. We are replacing and repairing cameras down there. Jasper Jones is in the old jail dispatch center. He's complete as well. Uh, 911 tower had to have another conduit installed going into the building so they could pull additional cables into there because the conduits that were there are pretty full. So uh, that's all being done through 911 center and the insurance company. Uh, Aqua has installed smart meters in all of our buildings. I think we have a couple a couple of meters that, that are left to be done, but not a big deal. It takes them about a half an hour. Um, and we continue to make headway in that jail, keeping things running. Keep in mind all the equipment. It's 1976. There's nothing. The only thing new in there is the pumps and motors that we've replaced. So staying on top of that's been a task, and, and we're working our way through it. The annex building, uh, Tom Latham has received a grant for money to replace the, replace the camera system in the annex building. Uh, it's being paid for with grant money. It was approved at the public safety building and at the finance committee. So we we're moving forward with this. They're gonna start, either the, they're either gonna start uh, next Monday or the 30th. I, I don't have a firm date on that, but that's also being done as well. There's a request made, we've moved the grand jury to the south end of the second floor of the annex building. That's where grand jury is being held now. It's no longer at the health department. Inside that room is one office. We'd like to take down two walls of it. And when the camera system goes in, we'll be able to apply a camera in there for better surveillance. We also hold sex offender classes, domestic violence, and grand jury are all held in that room. So security cameras is a must there. Uh, I'm, I'm going to try and get these two walls taken down. We might have to replace a little bit of carpeting, but but it is something that needs to happen and hopefully we can move forward with that as well. Uh, public safety building, we had a few issues, but overall we're doing real well there. The morgue smart meters were installed. Um, Mr. Gessner's having the morgue clean. That's an annual thing that he does there. It was reported yesterday in public safety. At Jerome Combs, we continue to update the ICE programs that are required, there, and that's an ongoing thing, and we're staying on top of that. The swipe card system that you guys approved about five months ago is complete. Johnson con controls. We had to work through some state's attorney issues, some issues in the contract. We've taken care of all that. State's attorney's office approved it. I've signed it. They're in the process right now of ordering all the equipment, get it here. Uh, they're waiting on just a couple more things and that project will be moving forward as well they're going to start that anytime uh parking lot out there all of all the uh, lights are repaired i want to thank the city of Kankakee who works with us they let us borrow their boom trucks uh, on short order we we call an ass and they're very good about helping us out getting that done so we don't need to we don't need to have a boom truck um just some general notes Air filters for the year will be ordered i typically order through companies that can buy the filters from moments I, I, I try to keep that money in the county as best we can. Um, snow removal equipment is being made ready as we talk. 
uh, on contract negotiations are ongoing, and we've made some real headway in this last week with that. I think that the uh, negotiation team, they, they're doing a great job. Uh, manpower continues to be an issue with my department. I know everybody's screaming for manpower. I could use a couple of guys myself, but we'll talk about that later. Um, we need to remind everybody we're doing the best we can with the manpower we have. There's been some complaints about some stuff not getting done. I We're doing the best we can, and I explain to them as best I can that this time of year is tough on us as we make ready for winter. Some things go undone. They're just going to have to go undone. And, and we'll get back to it. And I know better than anybody because I keep lists. So uh, the only other thing I do want to bring up, asphalt sealing and striping on these on these parking lots. We did a, we did a, a crack repair two years ago. We didn't do anything last year. And we might be right running right up at the last minute here on asphalt sealing. This is going to have to get done both here at, at, at all of our locations are in desperate need of asphalt sealing. Um, it's something we need to consider. In next year's budget, we probably need to throw some money at it. The last time I looked, uh, Jerome Combs Detention Center was about $10,000 to do that seal, excuse me, that sealing and striping. So this isn't going to be a cheap fix, a cheap repair, but it is something that needs to get done. So it's something I every, we need to consider here in this next budget. All right. Um, other than that, um, we're plugging along the best we can here. Any questions for Mr. Mr. Chairman? Thank you. Um, not we sent the request, you know, for your numbers. Please include those types of things in the budget request. Okay. Right? And note them as a line item. It may be that we put it into capital instead of into maintenance. Um, but you know, if you could rank them by priority, okay. that would also be helpful to us. Because not everybody gets everything they ask for, but we try to take care of the biggest things first, the most pressing. So, um, I, I wanted to. Oh, the uh, the ADA stuff. Uh, I don't know if people have had an opportunity to meet Pam Fogarty. She's our new ADA coordinator. Or uh, she's right back here somewhere. Right. So when you have new pieces of information that come up, drawings, make sure please copy her on the emails. So she's starting her own files on this. Okay. Um, but as the administration services coordinator, that's one of her duties as the ADA coordinator. And so sooner or later, once, you know, starting out here is like drinking from a fire hose. But after she gets familiar with the, 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 the layout and all of the issues, then a lot of those, if there, hopefully there are no more complaints, but any of the issues, changes, anything will go through her going forward, but she'll be working with you very closely. All right, very good. So I just wanted the committee to know that, and that's how we're, we're moving forward. So. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. I thought Mr. Oltoff was going to ask Mr. Oltoff. All right, go ahead. Sorry. You're scratching your head or you got a question? Um, we're happy to have her, but this was a you have to do instead of it'd be nice to do position. The attorney general said you have to have this because of, I just want to make sure everybody remembers that. This is, we're not on some hiring spree. So. Do you have a question? Well, we got to go. Any old business? <laughs> any new business? Any other business? Adjournment. Mr. Olt oh, wait a minute. Mr. Lejess. <laughs> Second by Mr. Oltall. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Adjournment. Thank you.